In the third part of the lecture, we will discuss penalized linear regression. We have seen that overfitting in multivariate linear regression can be prevented by reducing the number of features. An alternative to that is to keep the same features but to regularize the model instead. We regularize the model by adding a penalty to the lost fu loss function. And this penalty can, for example, discourage weights with the large magnitudes. If the penalty is equal to squared L2 norm, it's called the rich penalty. And uh, it is equal simply to the sum of squares of the individual weights. Here we plotted the penalty for the individual weights and uh, we see that if the weight is zero, the penalty is zero as well. And uh, as it increases, uh, its magnitude increases either in positive or in negative direction, the penalty will increase quadratically with it. The penalty is multiply, uh, multiplied by value lambda. This is a hyperparameter of the penalized regression. And uh, this hyperparameter determines the strength of regularization. We can uh, write uh, a rich uh, regression loss in matrix formulation as well. And we can see that uh, the rich penalty will become vector W transpose times vector W. To find the solution to rich regression, we again need to find vector w hat that uh, minimizes uh, the loss function. And uh, if we set uh, the first derivative <coughs> of the loss function with respect to w to zero, we will obtain an analytical solution to the rich regression problem that is given here. <coughs> you can see that we uh, also need to invert a matrix uh, to calculate the solution to rich regression. But this time we will add the value lambda to the diagonal of the matrix X transposed X before inverting it. And uh, this will regularize the solution. So it will help to prevent overfitting. And also uh, there is always sufficiently large uh, lambda that will make this matrix uh, invertible. We can also solve the rich regression problem using gradient descent. And for that, we need to calculate the first derivatives of the loss function with respect to W. The optimal hyperparameter lambda is found using cross-validation. And in this plot, uh, we have uh, uh, plotted the behavior of uh, root mean square error depending on uh, hyperparameter lambda. So uh, you can see that uh, for small values of lambda, the root mean square error on the training set is low, but uh, cross-validated root mean square error is high. As we come closer to the optimal value of lambda, uh, the, the root mean square error on the training set uh, will start increasing and root mean square error calculated cross-validation uh, is decreasing until it reaches the minimum. This minimum uh, uh, will correspond to the value of lambda that we will choose as a solution to our rich regression problem. As the, uh, root, as the lambda increases further, uh, then the root mean square error on uh, both training set and uh, calculated using cross-validation will also increase until it reaches stable value. And for large values of lambda, we are underfitting our model. Scikit-learn implements rich regression in object rich, and the hyperparameter lambda is set through parameter alpha and found using grid search CV. We have seen that already for the case of polynomial regression. So here you can see we imported reach model and we also created here. 
uh, we define the hyperparameter grid for the parameter alpha uh, on a logarithmic scale. And uh, this is done using NumPy function log space. And this will ensure that uh, we have good coverage of uh, different values for uh, alpha. After that, we can perform grid search just as we've seen before, and we can remember the optimized model in this variable best model. Two important things to remember. Uh, first of all, feature scaling is now necessary because the weights depend on feature ranges and higher weights are more penalized. So if you don't scale your features, you will get a different model. And uh, scikit-learn does not penalize intercept W0. And this is because uh, it reduces uh, the bias error introduced uh, to the rich regression using the regularization and in turn it improves the performance of the rich regression. So let's see how the rich regression performs on our three different data set, the one with single feature, whole bread and volume, six features, uh, which correspond to volumes of six brain tissues, and 86 features, which correspond to volumes of 86 brain structures. So if you look at the results, we can see that for one and six features, they have not changed. So the uh, rich regression, rich penalty didn't bring anything new compared to the uh, multivariate linear regression. However, uh, for 86 features, we got the best performance so far. We have R2 score 0 0.91 and root mean square error 1.17 weeks. So uh, the rich regression was able to take advantage of all 86 features uh, without introducing overfitting. Alternative to rich penalty is lasso penalty. Lasso stands for least absolute shrinkage and selection operator. And uh, it is again added to the uh, loss function. And it also just like rich penalizes weights with large magnitude. But this time the penalty is calculated using L1 norm. L1 norm means simply sum of uh, absolute values of individual weights. And we can see that for a zero weight, we have zero penalty. And as the weight increases either in positive or negative direction, uh, we get uh, increased penalty, but this time it increases linearly with the magnitude of the weight. This uh, type of penalty produces sparse solutions, and we will talk about that in a minute. We can also write uh, lasso regression loss in a matrix formulation. And a lasso penalty can be written as a W transposed times vector sine W. Vector sine W is filled with uh, ones, minus ones, and zeros, which depend on the signs of the individual weights. And this way we can create the vector of absolute values of the weights. So unfortunately, lasso penalty is not differentiable and therefore analytical solution does not exist. But we can still calculate the subgradient uh, sub of L1 norm. Subgradient is a generalization of the first derivative. And uh, for L1 norm, it is equal to sine W. The solution is then found uh, by gradient descent, just as before. So scikit-learn implements lasso regression in object lasso. And the hyperparameter lambda is again set through parameter alpha and found using grid search CV. So uh, the code is very similar to the code for uh, tuning the rich regression, except that we import and create the model lasso. And again, feature scaling is necessary and we don't penalize the intercept. Now let's compare rich and lasso regression. Uh, both uh, rich and lasso penalties decrease the magnitude of the weights. And uh, we can see that in this plot. 
So the blue circles uh, show the weights of the non-penalized uh, multivariate linear regression model. And the red stars and uh, uh, green triangles uh, show uh, the coefficients of reach and lasso regression models. So clearly you can see that the weights of the non-penalized model are much higher in magnitude. Now, if we plot uh, reach and lasso penalty into same uh, graph, uh, we can see that uh, reach penalty penalizes uh, the weights with a larger magnitude more, and that's for uh, positive and negative weights. On the other hand, lasso penalty penalizes the weights with a smaller magnitude more and this uh, drives smaller weights uh, to zero quicker. And in turn, this introduces the sparsity. We can visualize the sparsity of the lasso model in this plot. So uh, we compare uh, the weights of rich model and lasso model. Again, rich model is uh, plotted with uh, uh, red stars and we can see that uh, most of the weights are non-zero. On the other hand, for a lasso model, uh, most of the weights are zero and only few of them are non-zero and some of them are much larger than ridge weights. So here we can see that lasso solution is sparse. And finally, we can uh, compare the performance of ridge and lasso regression for our uh, example with 86 features. And we can see that lasso didn't perform as well as reach, but uh, we should not uh, really generalize this because this could be different for a different application. So let's have a little bit more of a theoretical insight into reach and lasso regression. So far, we have uh, formulated uh, region lasso regression as penalized regression problem in which we minimize the loss function that uh, is composed of uh, sum of square error loss and the penalty term. So here the penalty term is uh, expressed in general terms with RW. So this can be either reach or lasso penalty. But the same problem can be written also as a constraint optimization problem where we minimize the sum of square error loss subject to a constraint that the penalty is smaller or equal to a constant B. And this constant will be related to hyperparameter lambda. So let's uh, visualize what this means. So in this plot, uh, we have an example where, where we have just two weights, W1 and W2. And with the color, uh, we visualize uh, the uh, sum of square error loss. So uh, the yellow represents high values of the loss and blue small values of the loss. And uh, the white star shows the minimum of the sum of square error loss. Now, if we add reach penalty, then the solution will have to uh, lie inside this circular region, either in or on the boundary. And if the B is sufficiently small, this will drive the solution closer to zero. The reason why this region uh, is a circle is because uh, we used L2 norm. Alternatively, if we introduce a lasso penalty, we will have a diamond shape region instead. And uh, if uh, B is sufficiently small, then uh, uh, this penalty will again drive uh, the solution closer to zero uh, because it has to be inside or on the boundary of uh, this diamond shape region. But this time the solution will follow a different path. The path of the solution for decreasing uh, values of B can be visualized like this in this movie. And you can see that it's different for region lasso. 
So first of all, we can see that for a large B, the minimum of sum of square error loss is inside the region and therefore uh, uh, lambda is zero. So the regression problem is not penalized. As we in, uh, decrease B, the sum of square error, uh, minimum of sum of square error loss will be outside and the constraint will become active, which means lambda is larger than zero. And uh, as the as the B decreases, lambda will increase and drive the solution closer to zero. So in case of reach, you can see that uh, both weights uh, decrease together and reach zero at the same time. On the other hand, for the lasso, the smaller weight, uh, W2, reaches zero first, and then a uh, larger weight, W1, stays non-zero for a while until it uh, reaches zero as well. And this introduces the sparsity into the solution. Now is the time to test your knowledge. Uh, please uh, complete the quiz on keys that is called penalized regression. Do not forget to submit your answers. And once you do that, uh, continue to watch the final part of this lecture, nonlinear regression.